Well, hey, welcome. We just wanted to take a few moments and, and talk through some of the opportunities that are coming up in Advent um, and some of the collaboration things that we're talking about, but, but it's all actually birthed out of how do we create those worshiping experiences. Uh, and, and what we were realizing is we had a blended experience that was full and we were cramming everything in it and it worked for some and it didn't work for others. And when we knew it wasn't sustainable and then COVID hit. And then we started looking at what can we do with our COVID limitations? What can we do as we begin to go online and stream? And, and then more importantly, what should we do? And so as we talked amongst ourselves, not only with the, the three of us, but the extended staff and some of the others, uh, we began to go, we need to be very, very simple. We need to simplify. What are the basic elements of worship? So we have taken the time to, to really simplify our Sunday morning experience with an eye and an awareness of an online audience that we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. And now we're going, okay, as we're back, we can't solve everything by one Sunday morning experience. We're still limited by creating multiple Sunday morning experience. So we're literally thinking outside the box. And we have some opportunities and some options that we're going to experiment with to see how do we help meet more people's worship needs? How do we help fill their souls in ways? And so I have Becca and I have Jenny that are going to share some of the things that we've been talking about, we're working on, and just wanted to bring you up to speed. So Becca, we're realizing that people are saying, I, I miss those hymns and I'm, I miss the organ. And, and it's, it's hard to put all of the genres like we were doing together. It was feeling clunky and, and we had different pieces, but we also know we have to meet needs and, and do some of those things that have historically filled people's souls. And so what are some of the things that we're thinking about? I know we have one coming up this Sunday. <laughs> Well, first of all, thank you for uh, your responses on the surveys and thank you for your comments because those really help guide our, um, our ideas and our considerations and our ultimate decisions on what should and can be done. The, the thing you're referring to next Sunday is called Legacy Hymns and um, I had thought of a series. What, what Scott brought to us is that um, he was getting comments, you know, about hymns, and also we saw some of that on, on the surveys. And, of course, we heard from people. And we also heard about other genres as well. But uh, we thought, well, how can we, um, how can we have that need met for our people? And I named it Hymns, so Psalms, and Spiritual Songs from the Scripture. And I was thinking, well, let's start with hymns. And we've got uh, All Saints Day coming up, and so which happens to be right on a Sunday this, this year. And so I thought, what better time to do legacy hymns? Because those who appreciate the hymns normally had it from birth. You know, they were exposed to that as they're coming along um, and growing up. And so that's a large reason why they're so meaningful. Um, to that set of people. And so this Sunday, what I've done is I've invited a number of our people to uh, present a hymn in, musically in one way or another. So we have uh, the piano, the organ, flutes, um, a reel-to-reel -reel tape player, <laughs> ask Ian about that, <laughs> and different ways of presenting hymns and people will be telling you why they're meaningful to them and also some of the history of the hymn. And so we want you to have an opportunity to come uh, so we can have a concentrated concert of, um, of just that from time to time. So this Sunday, November 1st, All Saints Day, uh, we're doing that at three o'clock with Legacy Hymns. And so as we think through um, beyond Sunday, I know we're doing some collaborative work with Grace to begin to think um, of some of the the music of the holidays, how to worship in other spaces, and to lean into hymns, carols, 
uh, and some of the more traditional music of the holidays. What are some of those opportunities we're looking at as well? Well, they're not exactly firmed up yet, but we are uh, collaborating with Grace for the for the lessons and carols uh, kind of a series thing to get together, get our congregations together for these events. But also, um, w with the survey results, um, we didn't have enough choir people or handbell people to uh, pull off um, doing this ministry by ourselves because many of our people still wanted to uh, stay in protection at home and so we didn't have enough to do what we normally do and so meanwhile Grace had started uh, rehearsing a musical they had done before and they invited us to take part in that and so we went to their rehearsal to check it out and uh, decided to uh, that we could do that, the ones who were ready to come back to sing. And so we're meeting with them on Wednesday nights to rehearse, and we'll be doing that uh, sometime in December along with them. Um, and, and we're also talking about getting our handbell ringers together, possibly, to do a couple of numbers at that same event. All right. And just uh, being able to think outside, of how we have historically done those things. Now, the other thing we're knowing is that as we are reaching our young families, they're busy and, and at all ages are really busy, but, but boy, these young families, even in shutdown, they have been busy. And one of the things you said early on was how do we support these young families and help them as the primary faith teachers? Um, and so we, you've, you've done an amazing job helping expand that and learn that, but we also know worship has been a challenge for them. And so what are some of the things we're looking at, Jenny, as we consider Advent and some of the options for what we are originally thinking are young families, but maybe even more? Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, Advent um, enters us into the gift giving season. So we thought that why don't we give our families a gift this season? And that gift is the gift of Sunday morning because we all know that families are just super busy. And a lot of families, their only time to be together and at home is Sunday morning. But we know that those families still want to have an opportunity and, and a possibility to worship um, with the congregation um, in a church. So, uh, so we are looking at, we created a survey, um, it's called Family Worship Opportunities. Um, and uh, we've created that survey and we've shared it. And we're asking for your, for your input basically on what nights of the week work best. And this is specifically an alternative to Sunday morning. So if you're looking at the survey and you're going, wait a minute, I wanna worship on Sunday morning, feel free to come on Sunday morning. We're not gonna do away with that. Um, but what it is, is we're looking at things like Sunday evenings or a Monday night or a Wednesday night. Um, just something that we can have and we can offer during Advent to our families so that they don't feel that pressure of being here on Sunday morning. Because um, as we enter the Advent season, families, as I said, are busy. Advent, gift giving just makes them a lot more busier. Um, yeah. So we're looking at that. We're looking at different um, options we can do. Um, it would be it would be a, a regular service with with teaching. Um, uh, we're looking at whether we're going to do um, a family worship service where the families meet together, or if we're going to look at doing uh, separate spiritual formation opportunities where kids, youth, um, different ages would be together. But one thing we've noticed from our survey results has been we have people of all ages responding, which is really, it's really great because one of my things that I love most about, about church, I guess, is getting intergenerational people together. And so this, um, we want all of you to answer. We want all of you to provide input. And we love the fact that, um, that we have a possibility to make a family worship service or an experience on a different night, a midweek night, um, some other time that we can offer that uh, to everyone uh, within the congregation. Yeah, and just to, you know, as we've been thinking about what are some of the different things that we can do, uh, Sunday morning, we're limited. 
and we're limited by COVID, we're limited by those, uh, as Becca said, that are willing to come back and we want everybody to stay safe. And so we want to honor everybody's decision. If you want to stay safe, stay safe. That, your health and well-being is first and foremost. That's why we continue to do these online options. Bruce has done wonderful to create the and bring the technology together for us to meet those needs for those who are not in the room. But we also realize there's about a third, 31% is a statistic we've heard, of people who are working on Sunday morning. And so those people are not gonna come on Sunday morning no matter what we do. And so we're thinking outside the box to go outside of Sunday morning, outside even of this room, outside of just our church, the collaborations with Grace and other churches and other opportunities and so these are just some of the opportunities we're thinking about. We'll keep you up to speed. As Becca and Jenny both said, your input has been invaluable and actually is what brought us to this point. Um, we're just going to experiment and see what works. And Advent is going to be a time of gift giving and gift unwrapping. And some of those things we're going to learn as we look at 2021. We don't know what that's going to look like, but we know we're moving in that direction together.